Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. I'm in Lightroom again today and I'm exploring a tool that I haven't really explored much in the past. Uh, if you've been here before, you know a couple of things. Number one, recently I've been diving back into Lightroom, trying to get my arms around all the developments in this product in the last few years because I haven't been using it. And now that I'm using it again, I'm it's like uh, it's kind of like Christmas, to be honest. I'm finding so many cool, interesting, fun, and frankly powerful things I can do with it and uh, I'm making videos about it. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, but this video is specifically about calibration. It's not something I used in the past and I want to give a hat tip to Mark Denny. If you follow Mark on YouTube and you probably do, he has, I don't know, 200 something thousand followers, huge channel. Uh, seems like a great guy. I don't know him, but great photographer, great videos. But I watched one of his videos and he talked about calibra calibration in Lightroom and it really uh, kind of turned a light on for me, for lack of a better word. So thank you, Mark, for inspiring me uh, to use this tool and to make this video, frankly. So what I want to do is talk about it, why you might care about it, and what it can do for you, because it's powerful, it's crazy. And if you've been here before, you know I like to play with color. This is a tool I'm playing a lot with. So let's get going. Um, I've got a photo here, and you look at this photo and you're like, it's really orangey-red because it is a sunset, hence it should be kind of orangey-red if... Uh, especially if you get this kind of light. It was gorgeous and beautiful and all that stuff. I've done nothing except straighten the photo. I probably need to fix distortion and all that, but what I want to do is talk about calibration. However, the first thing I want to talk about is HSL. So you might come in here and look at this and say, hey, I'm going to adjust the saturation of the red and bring that up. And you drag it to the right and, you know, I'm going to 100 as an example. I don't recommend going to 100 really on really anything probably ever, but um, you can see what it's doing. It's it's not red, it looks terrible, and it's not working. And if I go left, I'm desaturating that, I'm getting that weird kind of fringing, for lack of a better word. And that's because uh, it's a lot more orange, really. So if you look at orange, you're gonna see a huge impact. As you're surely aware, every pixel is composed of three different values. There's a, a red value, a green value, and a blue value, RGB. That's why we say RGB. And in fact, when you hover over a photo, so uh, any pixel that you're hovering over, if you look right below the histogram, you're gonna see an R, a G, and a B, and it's gonna give you the relative values of that color in the pixel that you're hovering over. So right now I'm hovering over this kind of orangey, warm pixel in the sky, and if you look at the values, it says red is 91, green is 82.4, like I don't see the green, uh, and the blue is 55.3. So it's got more red than anything, but even when I move the red saturation, it's not picking it up. Now, if I hover over a kind of a neutral kind of gray one, you'll see the values now. The red is 84, the green is 81.7, and the blue is 76.4. If I come down here, and you can just move around and check this out, if you come down here, into this really dark area in that distant kind of mountain. You know, it's 11.2 for red, it's 11 for green, so 13.8 for, for blue. The point is, all three colors exist in every single pixel, and that's why calibration is so important because it's adjusting things at the pixel level. You're essentially shifting the mix of colors in each pixel. So even though uh, red did nothing for me here, green, I don't see any green, there's no impact on the photo. And if I drag the blue to the right and back, the only thing I'm seeing is a little bit of darkening of that shadow in the upper uh, top left of the photo in that cloud. But I'm not seeing any color with green or blue. And frankly, I'm not really seeing anything with red. But if we're going to calibration, it's very different. And again, it's because it's addressing it at the pixel level and red, green, and blue exist in every pixel, whether you're seeing that color in the photo or not. So if I take the red primary and drag this saturation to the right, you'll see the entire photo is, now I'm going to 100, so I don't, again, don't recommend doing that, but it's good for visual recognition. So I went to 100, but you're seeing the photo is getting very saturated, even though when I dragged the red in HSL all the way to the right, I didn't get anything out of it, really. And conversely, if I go left, it gets really desaturated. And you might think, yeah, sure, there's so much red, Jim, because look, it's a sunset, and it's already warmish red, orange. Okay, well, let's talk about green and blue. Same thing happens here, if I go left, you can see the photo is getting really desaturated when I go to a negative 100 in green, and when we go to the right, it gets really saturated, really increases that saturation, and in fact, that looks pretty good even for going to 100. Now, I don't really recommend it, but let's say you go 40 or 50, and that's dragging the green primary all the way to the right, and what do I get? I get a photo that started like that, and it now looks like that. It's really warmed those uh, pixels up, or I should say, warmed up the green and created a nice pop of saturation 
on the green values in every pixel, which is making the photo look, I think, pretty nice. And let's do the same thing with the blue. If I drag this all the way to the left, gets a lot flatter. If I drag it all the way to the right, gets a lot more saturated. So again, same kind of thing. Because blue exists in every pixel, there's a B, a G, you know, an R, a G, and a B value in every pixel. When you play with the saturation, you can impact the look of your photos. So before and after, and that's dragging the saturation of the blue primary all the way to 100. Now again, I don't recommend that. I would probably come down here, something like that, and maybe add some of that green. And I've got a nicely saturated sunset before and after, and all I did was just move the saturation of the green primary and the saturation of the blue primary. Didn't even touch the red. But here's one of the cool things is you've also got a hue slider. So I can roll that hue back and forth to see how that further refines, enhances, or adjusts or changes the color in my photo. So if I take the blue primary, if I go more toward the aqua, you can see that sunset is getting even richer and richer. And if I go to the right, it's kind of fading out as it gets more kind of an indigo kind of. So I don't really like that. I kind of like it a little bit to the left. I just don't want to overdo it, but it's a bit like um, adding some magenta into the photo without uh, playing with anything that's called magenta. Now, if I take the green primary and I go to the left, that's getting a bit more yellow. And if I go to the right, it's getting a bit more towards the green. And again, that's adding a little bit more richness to the color. So if you look at the before and the after, I've got a richly saturated, but I think natural looking sunset. And all I did is move a couple of sliders here in calibration. And again, the power of that is even though you mostly see orange in the original file, which is that, by adjusting these things, the R, G, and B mixture, if you will, at the pixel level, you're impacting the saturation across the entire photo. Now, there's also a shadow slider that allows you to adjust the tint and the shadows. So I could go slightly left to add a little bit of green to the shadows, which I don't really want to do here. Or if I go slightly to the right, I am picking up some more of that magenta and sticking that into the shadows. Having done that, maybe you want to pull back on some of these hue adjustments that you made so as not to get too over the top. But this allows you to come in and adjust that shadow uh, tint and really have an impact. And once again, the before and the after, massive, massive change in the colors and the saturation of the photo by using calibration to adjust the RGB values at the pixel level. Now, I want to get one more photo and show you another example. Okay, this one's from Venice, and I did use the basic panel to brighten the photo. There it was before, there it was after, and just to show you, I did not touch temperature or tint, uh, but I did come in exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, blacks and whites. So made some adjustments to balance out the light and basically made, made the photo usable and slash visible. So before and current state. And once again, if I go into HSL, if I drag the red, you'll see the red in some of the buildings that really starts to pop. If I drag the green, you'll see a little bit of that plant on the left and some of the plants in the distance. And if I drag the blue, there is a lot of blue here. And you can see that's impacting a lot of the photo. But of course, this photo, uh, or excuse me, this video is all about calibration and how you can use that to your advantage. And this is a photo that is frankly rich with color. It's just that dragging the individual sliders in HSL doesn't really get me where I want to go. So I'm gonna come in to red and the green and the blue primary and just move them around and show you how you can impact an image. So the saturation of the red primary, if I drag that to the right, I'm gonna to go to 100, and that doesn't even look bad, even though it's at 100, but if you look at this section over here, where that glow is reflecting on the wall, and the glow around the lamps there, if you look at the before and the after, it's beautiful, and it's warm, and it's rich, and I love it, right? So I'm gonna put that back to zero for now. I'm gonna do the same thing with the green. So if I drag the green, and green would be weird. You're dragging the green, but you're getting a same kind of a similar effect, I should say, as you did when I dragged the red primary. And that's because I'm adjusting the saturation at the pixel level. So the, uh, the G values, which exist in every pixel, are getting more saturated. So there it is before, and there it is now. And it looks pretty darn good, to be honest. And then uh, same with blue, right? If I go left, you're going to get a really desaturated. If I go to the right, Hey, remember when I dragged the blue in HSL, there was way too much blue all over the photo. I'm at 100 and I've just got a nice little pop, including in those areas of warmth around the light and the reflected glow of the light on that wall that's kind of red on the right hand side. So before and after. So super powerful. What I want to do is maybe use all three of those. Now, I don't recommend necessarily. It depends on the photo, of course, because every photo is going to be different. 
but I don't recommend always using all the sliders and I don't recommend going really high because it is a delicate dance where you're trying to just massage the colors to get enough without overdoing it. So experiment, just check it out and see what happens. But I'm gonna move this hue around and kind of see what happens. But I kind of like, if I go to the right, you can see I'm getting more of the yellow and I think it's throwing off some of those tones. If I go to the left, it's getting more kind of that reddish kind of plum and I kind of like that color. If I go left here, with the hue on green primary, uh, I don't really like where that's going, but if I go to the right, I'm getting a little bit more of that warmer kind of plum. And again, I like that look, so that I think that's looking pretty good. There it is before and after, and I'm gonna do a little bit with the blue. Now, if I drag the blue primary to the right, I'm just getting a little bit more towards that magenta kind of purple color. I don't wanna do that, it really throws off the overall color in the image, so I'm gonna double click to reset. But if I go left, you'll see that I can get a really interesting color take on this one, which kind of approaches that teal and orange uh, look that a lot of people like to use in their images. Uh, it's also used in film a lot. Uh, I might back that down a little bit, maybe pull back the saturation, but I can get just a little bit of that there, and I think it has a nice impact on the image. There it is before, and there it is after. And then if I wanted to come in and roll the hue a little bit, or the tint, I should say, for the shadows, maybe I go a little bit to the right, add a little bit of pink, and I get a nice overall color look to the photo without having to do uh, anything that might be considered complicated in color grading. I'm just moving some sliders and kind of experimenting. And if you look at the before and the after, I think I have a richly colorful image just using the calibration tool. It's that powerful, and frankly, it's that simple even though I think probably some people get intimidated by it because the word calibration might kind of throw people off. But now that I'm diving into it and seeing how powerful it is, I'm working through still how I'm gonna be using this in my color edits, and kind of what step, if you will, in the process. But it really does impact the colors globally. So it's, uh, in some ways, it might be kind of a color finishing tool for me in terms of being able to kind of come in and set an overall kind of color look or color mood to the photo at the end of my editing process. But as you can see, you have a massive shift in colors without really doing much other than just moving a few sliders. And that's really the power and frankly the fun that you can have with the calibration tool because you're going into each pixel and adjusting the R and the G and the B values. So even though you may not see a color with your eyes in an image, when you come in here and adjust them, the saturation and the hue at the pixel level, has a huge impact on the overall color look of your image, and it's just fun, frankly. So if you enjoy playing with color as much as I do, this is a tool for you to experiment with and have fun with. I wanna thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos, including more about Lightroom. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.